Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the Galea aponeurotica and the role it plays in male pattern baldness. Now, there's some interesting things to talk about. So at the end of this video, I'll share one simple way to use the insights we discovered to improve your own hair growth. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. So aponeuroses are strong sheets of tissue that connect muscles to bones or hold muscles together. They're mostly made of collagen, which makes them tough and able to handle stress. Their main job is to keep everything in place and help muscles move bones. The Galea aponeurotica is located on the top of the skull and it basically sits on top of the skull like a helmet, which is what Galea means in Latin. The Galea connects to the frontalis muscles at the forehead to the occipitalis muscles at the back of the head. It helps in movement of the scalp allowing for expressions such as raising the eyebrows and wrinkling the forehead. If you look at the illustration of the galea, one thing immediately jumps out at you. Only the scalp skin underlying the galea is prone to baldness. Scalp overlaying the muscles on the sides and the back of the head never go bald. Even for the most advanced Norwood 7, they will never lose their hair there. Could this be a coincidence? It is possible, but very unlikely. As I mentioned earlier, one of the functions of the aponeurosis is to withstand tension from connecting muscles. And in 2015, we got a detailed mathematical model of the tension that various regions of the galea experiences as a result of the forces transmitted by the adjacent muscles. On the left-hand side of this graph, you can see this tension. Lighter areas indicate higher tension, while the progressively darker areas are those with lesser and lesser tension. On the right-hand side, you can see the typical pattern of hair loss. The temples are usually first to go, followed by the rest of the frontal area and the crown. Last is the top of the head, between the crown and the frontal area. And there is an astonishing correlation between the degree of tension the various parts of the galea experiences and the propensity of the underlying scalp to go bald. Scalp over the highest tension areas is the first to go bald, followed by areas with intermediate tension all the way down to the areas with the least tension, which are the least to go bald. Statistically, the chances of this being a coincidence are fewer than one in a thousand. The million dollar question though is why? And how does it come about that the degree of tension in the galea leads to baldness in such an orderly and predictable fashion? The first thing to understand is that the scalp skin is tightly connected to the galea, meaning that tension in the galea is transmitted to the overlaying skin. So balding scalp skin is subjected to the same chronic tension as the underlying galea. A theory that's become popular in recent years is that this chronic tension then sets in motion a cascade of events in the skin tissues that lead to baldness. The first of these is inflammation, which is clearly visible in a microscope studies of the balding scalp and is concentrated around the upper portion of the hair follicles. This inflammation, in turn, can trigger the overexpression of a signaling protein called transforming growth factor beta-1. This is known for promoting fibrosis in various tissues, including potentially the scalp. When we say fibrosis, we refer to an excessive accumulation of extracellular material, most notably collagen. Collagen is essential for providing structural support for cells, including hair follicles but when it proliferates out of control, it eventually hardens and becomes microscopic scar tissue. This is what scientists call fibrosis. Like with the inflammation, the fibrotic tissue can clearly be seen under a microscope. It takes various forms, including concentric rings that surround the hair follicle. And as baldness advances, the fibrotic tissue also begins to occupy the lower areas of the miniaturized follicles until eventually the follicle disappears altogether. Where the follicle once stood, there's nothing but scar tissue. This is why men with advanced baldness have hard, shiny scalps. It's simply the extensive buildup of fibrosis. At that point, the hair loss is more or less irreversible. The only way to get hair back in those areas is with a transplant. And of course, some of that includes the surrounding tissue with the hair graft. Another hallmark of baldness is a deficiency in blood flow. Compared to healthy controls, men with pattern hair loss have around two and a half times lower blood flow in their scalps. This impairment is not generalized all over the scalp, but confined to the areas which are balding. So it's very possible that tension in the scalp is also behind this deficiency as it restricts the vessels that supply the scalp with blood. This might also be a part of the reason for minoxidil's effectiveness as it dilates the blood vessels and encourages the expression of growth factors that increases the density of the blood vessels around the follicles. Inspired by this idea, 
Researchers over the past 15 years started experimenting with injections that caused the perimeter of the scalp muscles to relax. They discovered that only one or two sessions of these injections are enough to stop hair loss and produce regrowth in many men. The reason these injections can be so effective is that by relaxing the muscles surrounding the scalp, they relieve chronic tension, restoring blood flow to the area. It's possible that this relaxation also helps relieve the chronic inflammation and overexpression of transforming growth factor beta 1. The main problem with these injections is that they are very expensive, with each session costing five to six hundred dollars. Given what we know about the galea and its role in hair loss, and what we know about scalp tension and microvascular circulation, engineers and researchers came together and created a device that aims to directly reduce this tension. It's named the Grow Band. This device gently grips the sides of the scalp and pushes upwards using an automated battery power control box. We see from user case studies that using this device for 10 minutes per day can be effective to improve hair growth all over the scalp. Those who use the grow band in combination with standard treatments like minoxidil and finasteride have seen even better results. This is because reducing tension, improving blood flow, and blocking DHT works very well as a combination treatment. The grow band pushes upwards, reducing tension on the galea and helping to remodel the fibrotic tissue, making it more suitable for healthy hair growth. You can find out more about the grow band over at hairguard.com. So do you think the galea plays a role in male pattern baldness or is it just a coincidence? Some people argue that the hair follicles at the front are simply more sensitive to DHT, but hair transplants prove this isn't true. If a hair transplant patient doesn't take finasteride, those hairs transplanted into the front of the head will start thinning after five to 10 years, whereas the hairs at the back of the head, the so-called donor area, will remain perfectly thick and healthy. This shows the location on the scalp is crucially important. Guys, I wanna know your thoughts. So please leave a question or comments below. And also make sure you subscribe to the channel for all of our latest updates. Please drop a like on this video if you found it useful. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.